Hey Superstar, welcome back to another VDevX YouTube session. And in this session, we are going to discuss about DevOps engineers, who they are, what do they do, and what tools they use to do their job. Let's go. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, not to miss our amazing episodes. So what is DevOps? DevOps stands for Development Operations. DevOps engineers are responsible for building infrastructure, automation processes that make development teams life easier. You see, as a software engineer, as a developer, I write, I'm hired to write and build uh, programs, applications that are scalable, that can be used by millions of people or billions of you, uh, people. So as part of my software engineering job, I obviously I want to spend as much time on actually programming and adding new features or fixing features. But in reality, besides just writing the code as a software engineer, I have to do a lot of manual steps. So I wrote my code, then I need to push my code to some cloud using a specific git commands. And after I push it, I wanna make sure other people uh, other peer software engineers are going to review my code and give some feedback and then I fix them and then push the code again. So uh, now from tech project manager's perspective, I want to make sure that my developers are not able to push their code without other peer engineers reviewing their code. Why? Because in software engineering, in software testing, there is this one important principle, catch bugs as soon as possible in the process because the later in the process you catch the bug, then the, cost, the more costly it's gonna become. So that's why the, you know, the earliest you can catch a bug as a software engineering team is when developer wrote the code and they pushed it to the, uh, you know, they created a pull request, you know, they created a request, okay, I want to, you know, push this code to our master branch. So now DevOps engineers are responsible to set up configurations and automations that would require two other software engineers to review the code and approve. And only then the developer who created the code can merge, actually push their code to master branch in tools like GitHub. So that's just one step that uh, the DevOps engineers are automating. Now other steps is after the code is pushed, now in software engineering, there are processes. Once you, you have the code, but your code is thousands of lines of code, right? That code needs to be transformed into an executable file. So for example, if you look at your uh, applications on your phone or applications on your desktop, let's say if you're opening Chrome, Chrome is just one icon that you are double clicking and then behind the scenes, it's just a huge program, right? So even YouTube, YouTube is a small icon, but obviously behind the scenes, it's a millions and millions of lines of code. So now software engineers have to transform their lines of code into this one icon, which is called an executable uh, file, okay? Now, in order to transform your code into executable file, you have to run specific commands. Let's say if you are building Java applications as a software engineer, you have to package it and create a jar file, okay, using this command, using the Maven tool. Now, back in the days when DevOps was not here, software engineers were responsible to run that command manually, okay? Yes, it might take like five, Sometimes it might take 15 minutes because uh, before you can create that executable file, there are so many unit tests that run. Uh, so that's why it can take up to 15 minutes. Okay, it's not a problem, but every day you are spending 15 minutes for the same thing, just to spend, send one comment and you have to wait for the result. So on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, these 15 minutes start adding up. So. DevOps engineers come up with different tools and automation processes that automate this process as well. And after this executable file 
the fully packaged program is ready, now it means this package, the uh, version of this code is ready to be tested. So we, uh, so software engineering team, software engineers have to reach out to Slack, reach out to uh, QA engineers, testers, telling them, notifying them, hey, I just created a new version of this application. I added a new feature. It's packaged. Now you can, it's ready to be tested. So again, I have to write this manual, this message manually. Now you cannot rely on all software engineers. They are all humans, right? They will make human mistakes. Sometimes they will forget. Sometimes they were waiting and then maybe their kids came, maybe their wife came and the food is ready. They need to go and eat. So they might forget to send that message. So, but QA engineers are just sitting there uh, and they don't really know if the application is ready to be tested. So DevOps engineers yet again automate this process too. So now we have three steps that are fully automated. Instead of DevOps engineers, uh, software engineers don't have to go and write all of these steps manually anymore. One manual step they have to do is push their code. After that point, now these three steps are fully, fully automated. The CI CD pipeline, CI CD automation tool DevOps engineers create is gonna go uh, make sure that once there are two approvals, the code is pushed automatically. Uh, CI CD pipeline, the autom DevOps automation tool is gonna create the executable file. And once it's all passed, it's gonna automatically send a message to QA engineering team notifying them that the new version of the application is ready to be tested. Now, then you have multiple steps in testing. You have different teams, uh, testing teams. So once the first test team did finish their testing, they need to notify the next team that, okay, they are done. Now they can do more comprehensive testing. And the same process goes on for three, four test stages. Okay, now DevOps engineers yet again automate this notification system as well. And lastly, uh, you have uh, you have to push it to production, make it available to the users. Uh, here you also have to do so many manual steps and DevOps engineers go ahead and automate it as well. So this is very high level of what DevOps engineers do and um, these are the all of the list of tools that uh, DevOps engineers have to learn. So you don't really need any background to get started as a DevOps engineer. Uh, you can take a six months course and should be ready to start applying for jobs and get a job. But it is very appreciated in the DevOps industry to take certifications on Linux, on different AWS, you have uh, Kubernetes certifications. So uh, they cost quite a bit of money, but they are definitely worth the investment if you can afford it. But also it is not required to have those certifications. They are nice to have. Uh, primarily, I like certifications, not because they will give you a better chance to be interviewed. Uh, you can still get an interview without any certifications. I like certifications because you really, uh, when you prepare for the certifications, you just cement your knowledge and you know feel more confident in your knowledge in those tools. So, yeah, there there is a recession everywhere uh, in the industry, in all industries, right? So, tech industry is also affected, and uh, but in 2023, we have in the worst market. Both our Devo both DevOps engineers and as that our as that graduates have been uh, landing jobs, and uh, this is yet yeah, the market is definitely way more competitive these days. So that's why you want to make sure on you know being a pro in what you are learning. So back in maybe five years ago, when we were going out to the market. It was much easier to get a job because there were not as many candidates. But now you cannot just make break your way into tech with your weak knowledge, uh, weak skills. So that's why now it's uh, more important than ever to be to have this uh, strong, solid 
technical skills. So DevOps engineer salaries have increased for 10% every year for the past five years. Um, now there is definitely always in the market is gonna have a shortage of high quality candidates, professionals, right? High quality talents don't sit uh, in the market. They are always taken. So uh, average salary of a DevOps engineer per hour uh, graduates is around starting from 100K and it can go all the way up to 160K for your first job. But obviously if you are getting a job at top tech companies like uh, AWS, um, Apple, Google, you could be talking about 250 plus K per year as uh, your DevOps engineer salary. In order to become a DevOps engineer, you can sign up to our DevOps course. And in this DevOps course, you will be, uh, you will cover, our curriculum covers everything you need to know to be able to break into top company DevOps positions. So we are talking about Linux. We are talking about cloud systems like AWS. Uh, we are talking about Kubernetes, Terraform, Docker, CI CD. These are the main tools that you have to know these days to break into tech. Now, also, there are different learning uh, paths you can take, right? You can go and go to university, go for four years, spend the first two years on psychology and history, and then last two years on few uh, programming classes. So universities are definitely the longest and the uh, most expensive paths you can take. Uh, by the way, Companies don't require bachelor's degree to for DevOps engineers. Second pass is you can go and self-learn on you know open sources like YouTube. But honestly, for DevOps engineering, it's not the best idea because you depend on some so much infrastructure. And on YouTube, uh, they don't give you the infrastructure, so you won't be able to even shadow them. And uh, last option is to uh, go for. Uh, VDevX course and in VDevX course what makes us different is that we have pre-built the entire infrastructure for you so that you can learn in a real world tech project simulation. Uh, additionally, uh, our lectures are micro lectures and every micro lecture is followed by exercises. In every exercise you are going to learn, in every exercise you are going to be solving small small problems and you you will be solving up to 60 exercises every week so as i mentioned before you cannot afford to hit the market with strong technical skills so and our program is designed to make sure you are learning based on practice and when you go to the market you can tell them about how many how much problems you have faced what type of troubleshooting how you troubleshooted those problems and how you face those problems and what did you learn from those problems. So our program is designed to make sure you have stories to talk about in your interviews. How can you grow as a DevOps engineer? Once you are a DevOps engineer, you can become a DevOps manager where you are managing multiple teams. Plus, uh, you can go into cloud architect positions in larger companies. Uh, these are very well paid jobs. We are talking about half a million dollars in salary. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe to our channel not to miss our amazing episodes about tech world. Let's go.